Is the wild man a myth? Shalom and Shalom. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the concept called the wild man. And we're going to be taking a look at illustrated manuscripts, art, sculptures, relics, statues, plaques, so on and so forth of the so-called wild man. Now what is the so-called wild man? We're going to read a little excerpt we have here. Now it reads, the wild man is a mythological, I got mythological in quotation marks, figure that appears in the artwork of literature of medieval Europe, comparable to the satyr or fawn type in the classical mythology and to Sylvanus, the Roman god of the woodlands. The defining characteristics of the figure is its wildness. From the 12th century, they were consistently depicted as being covered with hair. Now we have an image of the wild man on the screen right now, on this book or leaflet that we have here. Now just by, look, just by examining this image, who does this look like today? I'll leave, as the, I'll leave as that. Now with that being said, let's get on with the video. In this image, you can see a bunch of wild men chilling in the forest. And as you can see, once again, they are hairy all over, naked and pale. In this image of the wild man, you can see him holding a tree trunk and it looks like he has someone attached to it, almost looking like he's kidnapping somebody. Now look at this image of the wild man here. He's in a beast like state. As you can see, he's on all fours, naked, hairy in the forest. Here's another variation of that same image. Here's another, once again, in a beast like state, hairy as hell in the forest. Now I included this image because we want to read what's on it. At the top it says medieval ridiculousness. Some medieval manuscripts are populated by wood roses. The Oxford English Dictionary defines a wood rose as a wild man of the woods. So basically a wood rose is just another way to say wild man. Wood roses are covered in shaggy hair. 
Hmm. Now, if you had to pick out a demographic of people who has this shaggy hair, you know, I'm, I'm just asking a question, that's all. And are often seen trying to carry away maidens. Hmm. Now, where have we seen this before? So we just read how the wood wolves or the wild men carried away maidens. So I wanted to link up the wild men with the cavemen because they seem awfully familiar with each other. But I've got here, caveman courtship and its mythology, in quotations. Specific, specific cultural myth of the mating behavior of the cavemen, where the cavemen would club a woman over the head and drag her by the hair to his cave. This of course bears no resemblance to anything real. Hmm. Now let me ask a, let me ask a question. If these wild men had a darker complexion, would it be still classified as a myth? I know I just thought the term clubbing you know how dudes go out to the club and then they bring a woman home? I wonder if this way it stems from. Very interesting. Now look at this piece of tapestry here. This is found at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Now let's just analyze the first half of the title. It says, Wild Men and Moors. Now we already know who the wild men are. So that must mean the Moors in this tapestry must be the black figures. But wait a minute. I thought the Moors weren't black. Hmm. Now just by analysing this piece of tapestry here, we can see the wild men to the left. They are naked, they are hairy all over, they are pale, and they're charging the castle with sticks and stones and tree branches. And who is defending the castle? Who is in the castle? We can see the black figures. We can see within the castle, the king, the queen, the princess. I can see the knights with their bow and arrows. These, was, these must be the Moors, right? Because once again, let's read the title. Wild men, we know who they are, and the Moors. So the and must be referring to the black figures in this castle. But something ain't adding up. Especially during this time period. And in conventional history and what's tour. Shouldn't black people be in Africa, living in huts during this time period? Yet we see here, they are actually the king and the queen and the knights, and they are defending their castle from pale figures, hairy all over, running around naked, uncivilized. Huh. Hey, I'm just making a statement. You guys can come to your own conclusion on this. But go look this up. Just type in Wild Men versus the Moors. Now what the heck is going on in this piece of medieval art here? Look at this shit. You can see the black men fully clothed. They even got swords in their hand. And right next to them 
you can see these weird pale looking figures riding the goats what the heck was really going on during this time period so called black people that are watching this there's no way the powers that be will lie to you about your own history right what the heck is going on man look at this image I don't even know what to say about this. Hey, hey, hey. You guys, come to your own conclusion. Now right here brothers is a real man that lived, his name is Petrus Gonzalovus who lived during the middle ages Now, as you can see just from his portrait he looks like a wild man of the woods. Now we're going to read some information about him. It says Petrus Gonzalovus referred to as the man of the woods. Now I'm going to read that one more time. Petrus Gonzalovus referred to as the man of the woods became famous during his lifetime because of his condition hypertrichosis which is basically excessive growth of body hair but continuing on his life at various courts in Italy and France has been well chronicled now we're going to take a look at that real quick Petrus first came to the court of Henry II King of France in 1547 and was sent from there to the court of Margaret of Parma, region of the Netherlands. He married while there. Later he was moved into the court of Alexander Farnes, Duke of Parma. Four of his seven children were also afflicted with hypertrichosis. Now after we finish reading this we're going to get a portrait of his family. But continuing on his family became an object of medical inquiry among others. Despite living and acting as a nobleman, Gonzalves and his hairy children were not considered fully human in the, in the eyes of their contemporaries. Gonzalves eventually settled in Italy with his wife.
Now this is a portrait of his family. Now at the beginning of the video, when I showed all those illustrated manuscripts, the wall paintings and the art of the Wilde family, tell me you don't see it here. So once again, is the Wild man a myth? Now this image right here is of a little boy called Lalit. Now there was a mini YouTube documentary series on him called The Boy with Werewolf Syndrome Born Different. Now as you can see, he looks like the so-called Wildman, right? Now we're going to find some other images of the so-called Wildman or people with hypertrichosis syndrome that I found floated on the internet. So now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. If you was to take this wild man here, bathe him, shave him down, clothe him, clean him, and civilize him, who does he look like? I'm going to ask it once again. If you was to shave him, bathe him, clothe him, and civilize him, who does he look like today? Now I'm sure you've got that answer in your head. Now with that being said, hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, if those people were in rulership today, I'm sure they would uh, control mainstream media, what you see in the textbooks, what you see on TV, what you read, the education system, Hollywood movies, documentary channels, and with them being in rulership, hypothetically speaking of course. People of a darker complexion, their history always relegates to slavery and they really didn't contribute to anything. They may throw a bone now again say that a dark person, a darker skinned person invented this or was a pioneer of that but for the most part they were mainly slaves, you know, hypothetically speaking of course. Now could it be that they've purposely lied? and they hid their own history where they were in a lower state and uh, I don't know probably bleached over washed over iconoclasmed certain artifacts, relics, sculptures, statues to make them look like themselves I don't know, I'm, I'm just asking a question hypothetically speaking of course now for those who know we know who the kings, the queens the aristocrats, the noblemen, the warriors, the soldiers, the knights, who the original ruling class were. And for those of you who have watched my previous videos, we went through artifacts, relics, sculptures, monuments, statues, coats of arms, historical documentation to prove these things. Now I can't really go into too much detail on the wild man because of the platform that we are on. But you guys can come to your own conclusion. Giving all praises to Most High Yahweh, giving acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai, is the wild man a myth?